Hello and welcome to World Panorama, your favorite weekly show on a complete roundup of all the biggest international news stories. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Let us start the program with this week's top stories. Democrats celebrate their return to the majority in the US House of Representatives. Trump's Republicans bolster their Senate majority. President Trump heralds midterm election results as a tremendous success. Sri Lankan President Sirisena dissolves parliament, announces NAP election on 5th of January, nearly two years ahead of schedule. US expresses concern over decision. US unleashes its toughest ever sanctions on Iran, hitting oil, banking and shipping. Iran's economy to suffer but likely ride out sanctions storm due to rising crude prices and deepening divisions between the US and other major powers. Pakistani Christian woman Asiya Bibi freed from prison seeks asylum in the Netherlands. Supreme Court last week acquitted her of blasphemy that sparked violent protests from Islamists. And amid a bitter wrangling between the government and the opposition, Bangladesh Election Commission announces general election on 23rd of December. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to seek re-election. The biggest story this week is from the United States, uh, where results of the midterm elections showed a split decision at the congressional level. Democrats won the lower house, so the House of Representatives decisively, while President Donald Trump's Republicans uh, padded their margin in the upper house, that is Senate. Democrats have pledged to check the president's power and investigate his uh, tax returns, Russian interference in the 2016 election, and actions by his administration. However, Republicans' expanding majority in Senate means that it will now be less difficult for the upper house to confirm new high-level Donald Trump administration officials. Now, Trump says he's ready to work with the Democrats, but he vowed to adopt a warlike posture if Democrats investigated him. The opposition Democratic Party has taken control of the House of Representatives in the midterm elections, dealing a blow to President Donald Trump. However, Trump's Republican Party retained its majority in the Senate. Breaking the Republican monopoly on power, Democrats picked up over two dozen seats in the House, more than the 23 needed to take control of the House for the first time in eight years. Donald Trump, who campaigned aggressively in the last several weeks, however, expressed a satisfaction over the results, terming it a tremendous success. Incredible day. And last night, the Republican Party defied history to expand our Senate majority while significantly beating expectations in the House for the midterm and midterm year. We did this in spite of a very dramatic fundraising disadvantage driven by Democrats' wealthy donors and special interests and very hostile media coverage, to put it mildly. So what does the result mean for American politics? By capturing the House of Representatives, the Democrats may exert a major institutional check on Donald Trump and break the Republican monopoly in Washington. There are indications that the Democratic Party would make it tough for President Trump, who wants major legislative changes on some of his signature issues, including immigration, tax and health care reforms. Tuesday's vote was seen as a referendum on a polarizing president, even though he is not up for re-election till 2020. 
If this was a referendum on Trump, I think you have to be pretty happy if you're the president, because when you look at historically how midterms turn out, uh, he actually held on to far more seats than President Obama did, than President Bill Clinton did, uh, than, frankly, than the Bushes did. So that's a pretty good a pretty good number for him. And again, many of these races, especially in the House areas, these are districts, these are not states, they're not national elections, where you saw the bigger races, the president's party held on. While the results were still being tallied in close races, Trump fired his Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The outgoing Attorney General had long angered the President for accusing himself from the Russia investigation. Trump named Sessions Chief of Staff Matthew Whitaker as the Acting Attorney General. After Sessions' dismissal, demonstrations took place outside the White House and in New York and elsewhere demanding that Trump do nothing to hinder an ongoing investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 U.S. election. However, Sessions' departure is the first in what could be a string of high-profile exits as Trump reshapes his team to grid for his own 2020 re-election effort. I'm here to protest the appointment of Matt Whitaker as the new AG. Um, I think there can be no debate that he is a stooge, a crony uh, of Trump, and the public can have no confidence in this investigation. Um, there can be no integrity, no independence to this investigation with someone like that overseeing it. While Trump says Republicans defied history in the midterm elections by maintaining control of the Senate and winning a slew of governor races, Democrats are celebrating taking back the House of Representatives. However, the 2018 midterms have showed that America is deeply divided. It is no longer along traditional red and blue boundaries. Neither party can claim a clear advantage in the arithmetic that will decide who will win the White House in 2020. These midterm elections were also notable for the number of people who voted and the number of women that were elected. The new house would come into being next January. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, let's try to understand the midterm uh, U.S. Uh, election results in detail. We have with us uh, Mr. Shiv Shankar Mukherjee, former ambassador, joining us. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for joining Thank us here on Rajya Sabha TV. So, uh, we'd like to understand from you that, you know, the Democrats were hoping uh, that, you know, the country would give a decisive verdict uh, to... President Donald Trump and to Republicans, but that did not happen. We saw, uh, you know, uh, Democrats are flipping about uh, 30 GOP held seats right. and taking over the House of Representatives, but uh, GOP gained ground in the Senate. So how do you look at uh, the overall U.S. midterm elections results? Well, yes, you're right, and, and so was your report, uh, the Bureau report. Uh, the, what the Democrats expected and what was widely talked about as a blue wave Yes. Uh, that would uh, lead to a very significant rise in the Democrats uh, winning in the elections to the House of Representatives did not really happen. But uh, still, the fact remains that uh, the, the uh, House now has a Democrat majority. The, the size of the majority really does not matter because uh, the... The, the, the politics in the U.S. is now so totally divisive and so rigidly divisive that uh, there's very, very few instances, uh, except in the case of healthcare um, as an exception, where a uh, member of a party, you know, votes with the other side. Uh, there, there's, there's very, very little uh, evidence of bipartisanship, even in minor issues. So, uh, you know, on any issue in which... Uh, the, the uh, you know, where there's a majority, a simple majority, the democratic view in the House will prevail. They will also be a Democrat in charge of all the, uh, all the congressional committees on security and, 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 and uh, various other things which affect the future of President Trump himself. Yes. So that is to their satisfaction. Yes, uh, the president's advantage is that he's in increased his, the Republican Party has, uh, you know, a slightly greater majority now in the Senate. Yes. And uh, the Senate is important to the presidency and the Republican Party because it is in the Senate that uh, various senior positions uh, are uh, sent for endorsement uh, by Congress. Uh, 
uh, to the Supreme Court, as it happened just now yes. uh, with Justice Kavanaugh, uh, you know, even ambassadors uh, to, to different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, he'll find it, the, the party, the president, will find it easier to get his nominees in key positions wherever it is legally required, endorsed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, but the, the founding fathers, the, I think the most significant uh, underlying uh, sort of development will be mm -hmm. the founding fathers of the U.S. in the Constitution did a very significant thing as far as checks and balances are concerned. Uh -huh. uh, they gave Congress the budget and they gave the president the veto. Uh, and the budget is an all-important part of, of controlling government policy. So there, the, the Democrats will have the advantage. Right. The president can counter that advantage with his veto. Mm -hmm. The veto can only be overturned by a two-thirds majority in, in the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. which is you know, obviously impossible to get in the present setup. Uh, so you have a situation where I think you will see a term that Indians are very familiar with, especially in the domestic scenario, in issues that matter to most Americans on health care mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know, various other domestic issues, uh, which is policy paralysis. All right. Uh, if you look at the midterm results, uh, if, you, if you look closely at the gains for Democrats, gains for Republicans uh, individually, of course, the Democrats who won a large majority of uh, women. That's right. Young people, uh, even... Uh, non-white white voters and they also captured contests in uh, you know historically Republican suburbs areas like Richmond Chicago Denver right. uh, similarly if you look at the Republicans uh, you know President Donald Trump had said it is a basically a referendum on himself and he would also be very pleased because if you look the GOP gained of course g ground in Senate but uh, they easily defeated Democratic incumbents in Indiana uh, Missouri, North Dakota, you know, these are the states that Donald Trump had won in 2016. Right. So it seems that much of the country's deep red is even getting redder. Well, uh, that, that uh, has happened, but I don't think we can extrapolate that into a medium term or a long term impact on, on American politics, on American society and thinking. But the question you raised, uh, the, the, the first part of your comment or your question was, I think, extremely significant in the long term. Yes. This election, for mm -hmm. the first time, uh, it, it has been widely seen as a referendum on President Trump, uh, naturally, and, that, and quite rightly so. There has never been a more uh, uh, single president with such a huge positive and negative impact on society, a, a divisive, polarizing impact on, on society. Now, uh, but there is what is called, uh, you know, the, the law of unintended consequences. Uh, President Trump has given aspirations to uh, a section of the electorate that really represents white supremacy, patriarchy, misogyny. All that is anathema to the liberal uh, mind, yes. uh, not just in America, but worldwide. Mm -hmm. And that forms his hardcore support, no matter what he does, no matter what mistakes he makes, no matter what he does to enrage liberal opinion. Mm. Uh, it is like, as someone, as one commentator said, it's like red meat to his supporters. So red has become redder in some places. But the, the, very, the, but, but the unintended consequences that those uh, who were sort of sitting on the fence as liberals, uh, are now solidly and totally mm -hmm. getting together to oppose those policies. The, the traditional democratic vote bank of women, youth, yes. the educated, mm. the minorities, mm. uh, very often, uh, you know, let the party down, shall we say, by simply not coming out and going to the, uh, going to the polls to, to, to vote. And this time round, it did. Women in unprecedented numbers yes. stood for election. True. Women in unprecedented numbers, and they represent half the population, came out to vote. Women in unprecedented numbers won elections. Yes. And women, in, in the number of women who won elections mm. in an unprecedented way, there was an unprecedented uh, uh, representation of women of color, yes. uh, Native Americans, Muslim, Muslim women. women yes. Uh, so this is a trend that I, th I think this is not a one-off. Mm -hmm. This is going to give a huge impulse 
to, to uh, American politics. Yes. And uh, I think we'll have a very long-term impact. Absolutely. So the red got redder, blue got uh, even more bluer. Well, so midterm elections saw America <laughs> even more divided. But for now, the action uh, will shift to Capitol Hill, uh, where uh, two years of really conflict uh, lies ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador, for joining us and sharing your perspective on that entire story. And now an update on a situation in Sri Lanka. Well, the island nation's political crisis has deepened as President Maithripala Sirisena dissolved parliament and announced a snap polls on 5th of January. He made the announcement after it became evident that he did not have enough support in the House for Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, who was appointed by him under controversial circumstances. Sirisena signed a Gazette notification to dissolve the nation's parliament with effect from Friday midnight. The election will be held on 5th of January, while the new parliament will be convened on 17th of January. The United States was quick to voice its concern as the lawmakers warned that the U.S. aid was in question. U.S. said uh, that uh, as a committed partner of Sri Lanka, it believes that democratic institutions and processes need to be respected to ensure stability and prosperity. And the United States this week announced a new raft of sanctions on Iran. More than 700 individuals, entities, vessels, aircrafts are now on the sanctions list, uh, including major banks, oil exporters and shipping companies. The U.S. Uh, reinstated a raft of sanctions in the month of August as well, but analysts say that this latest round is by far the most significant. However, the other signatories to the 2015 Iran nuclear deal had condemned Donald Trump's walkout from the pact and are now looking to bypass U.S. sanctions. But analysts doubt that this will lessen the impact of uh, sanctions on Iran given the importance of the United States to the global trade. Iran is not just an object to be played with by Trump's administration or by some of their allies in the Persian Gulf or in our vicinity. It is an actor. It is an actor with self-confidence. And the self-confidence that Iran has uh, achieved is a real achievement of post-revolutionary time. It has not been achieved easily but it gives us the sense that we can manage the affairs in a more skillful and adapt way. Iran staying defiant after the Trump administration restored all sanctions lifted under the 2015 nuclear deal targeting core parts of Iran's economy. The sanctions have been imposed after US withdrew from the nuclear accord earlier this year, calling it the worst deal ever negotiated. The agreement had offered Iran sanctions relief in exchange for reducing its nuclear development. Trump says the economic pressure will force Iran to curb its missile and nuclear programs. We have decided to issue uh, temporary allotments to a handful of countries, responsive both to the specific circumstances and to ensure a well-supplied oil market. The U.S. will be granting these exemptions to China, India, Italy, Greece, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and Turkey. Each of those countries has already demonstrated significant reductions of the purchase of Iranian crude over the past six months, and indeed two of those eight have already completely ended imports of Iranian crude. However, Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, says the country will continue selling oil. What comes as a boost to him is that UK, France, China, Russia and Germany, that were the other signatories of 2015 nuclear deal, have condemned Trump's walkout from the pact and have all promised to support European firms that do legitimize business with Iran. The European Union is preparing a special mechanism to enable payments for Iranian oil and other exports without US dollars, possibly through a barter system. We consider US sanctions wrong. Germany agrees with our friendship in France and Britain and within the European Union we are working with new instruments to make sure trade continues with Iran. Because we are firmly convinced that the agreement we reached, that is the 2015 Iran nuclear accord, prevents Iran to pursue uranium enrichment for military purposes. Despite differences with its allies, USA's even more measures could follow soon.
It says more than 20 nations had already cut their oil intake from Iran and its exports had fallen by a million barrels a day. While the Trump administration has granted temporary exemption to eight countries to continue importing Iranian oil, that includes India and China, which are among Iran's largest trading partner, it says these exemptions are temporary. Look, I think we've said for a long time zero should mean zero, but some countries that uh, for the last three or four years had been able to, to purchase uh, oil from Iran uh, need some time to get down to zero. These are not permanent waivers, no way. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to squeeze Iran hard. Experts say that despite Iran's attempt to mitigate the downsize effects, uncertainty will remain prevalent for next six to 12 months. The doubt that Iran could cushion the economic blow in the near term the International Monetary Fund had forecast Iran's economy will contract in 2018 by 1.5 percent and by 3.6 percent in 2019 due to the dwindling of oil revenues. At the same time, the World Bank anticipates inflation in Iran jumping to 23.8 percent in 2018-19, from 9.6 percent in 2017-18 and to 31.2 percent in 2019-20. But the analysts say there is unlikely to be an economic meltdown. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Big story coming in from Pakistan, where Asiya Bibi, a Pakistani Christian woman, was released from jail after spending eight years on death sentence. Asiya's acquittal triggered a nationwide anger as radical Islamist groups demanded a reversal of the Supreme Court order. Asiya Bibi became the first woman to be jailed under the most widely criticized blasphemy law of Pakistan. Here is a detailed report. Pakistani Christian woman Asia Bibi, 47, has been freed from prison a week after the Supreme Court overturned her conviction and death sentence for blasphemy against Islam. She is a free woman now. Her right is being heard. When a decision is made, she will go wherever she wants to go. It's a free country. She is a free national. No one can object to that. If a free national of Pakistan wants to go somewhere, he or she has to get a visa and go. Nothing odd about that. According to officials, Asia Bibi was at secure location in the country, dismissing some media reports that she had been flown abroad. Let me state clearly that Asia Bibi remains at a safe place in Pakistan. I would also request all of you, urge all of you, to verify such news before issuing them, in line with the standards of objective and impartial journalism, to prevent needless sensationalism and controversy. <laughs> The country's decision to overturn the verdict led to violent protests throughout Pakistan by angry mobs calling for the judges in the case to be killed. The release prompted immediate anger from a hardline Islamist party that has threatened to paralyze daily life countrywide with street protests if her acquittal is not reversed. The members of Jamaat Islami also staged a protest despite a deal between the government and the ultra right party, Tehri Gilabayak. The agreement could see authorities seek to put Asia Bibi on an exit control list, barring her from leaving the country, and open a review of the verdict in the courts. In every nook and corner of the country, the sons of Islam have opined against the Supreme Court verdict by coming onto the streets. The judgment of the Supreme Court in which the blasphemer Asia was acquitted, the people gave their verdict against it. The court of Pakistan's people has rejected the decision of the Supreme Court. We do not accept any such decision which is made under international pressure. What kind of verdict is this from the Supreme Court of an Islamic Republic which is worrying Muslims and satisfying infidels? Pakistan's new Prime Minister Imran Khan issued a warning to the religious ultra-right party that any prolonged blockade of streets would be met with action, but supporters of Tehrik-e-Labaik immediately condemned the ruling and continued with their protest.
मैं इन अनासर को अपील करता हूं आई अपील टू दीज एलिमेंट्स डू नॉट कोलाइड विद द स्टेट दिस कंट्री इज गेटिंग आउट ऑफ डिफिकल्ट टाइम्स एंड थैंक गॉड गुड टाइम्स आर हेड आई अपील टू यू फॉर द सेक ऑफ दिस कंट्री डू नॉट ट्राई टू हार्म दिस कंट्री फॉर योर वोट बैंक एंड फॉर पॉलिटिकल गेन्स इफ यू डू दिस लेट मी मेक इट क्लियर टू यू दैट द स्टेट विल फुलफिल इट्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी it will protect the properties and the lives of the people we will not allow any damage to happen we will not allow traffic to be blocked the lawyer who helped asia bibi however had been forced to flee to netherlands for his life the lawyer said he did not know whether bibi had already been released from prison or where she would want to seek asylum after being acquitted by the supreme court i'm not happy here to be without her i could have been much happier but everybody said that uh, no you are the prime target at the moment and we whole world is taking care of asia and i ask her do you know asia is released or not no 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 we can't tell i said do you know some country which country is taking no no we can't tell for security i mean this is the latest today Asia Bibi a mother of 5 was convicted of blasphemy in 2010 over allegations that she made derogatory remarks about Islam after neighbors objected to her drinking water from their glass because she was not muslim she also became the first woman to be sentenced to death by hanging under Pakistan's blasphemy laws which critics say are too harsh and often misused bureau report rajya sabha tv and bangladesh would hold a general election on 23rd of december the country's election commission has announced authorities say that they will hold a free and fair national election despite a bitter wrangling between the government and the opposition the opposition the bangladesh nationalist party the bnp has been demanding dissolution of parliament before the polls and the formation of a caretaker government and the party in is in disarray following the jailing of its uh, chief or former prime minister Khalid Azia on corruption charges however the ruling awami league has rejected the demand for a caretaker government saying that it was unconstitutional in the polls uh, that have been announced uh, prime minister sheikh hasina is seeking to get reelected while her government has won widespread uh, global plaudits uh, for letting in hundreds of thousands of rohingya refugees who fled the persecution in Myanmar its critics have decreed hasina's increasingly authoritarian rule the government's handling of student protests this year and the crackdown on free speech hasina and khalida who between them have ruled bangladesh for decades are bitter rivals and the bnp says its leader has been jailed on trumped up charges to keep her out of politics And finally countries across the world are commemorating the centenary of the first world war the centenary started on 28th of July 2014 with the commemoration of uh, the outbreak of the war and are continuing till the armistice day on 11th of November now the war to end all wars spread carnage across Europe especially in northern France and Belgium killing uh, 17 million soldiers and civilians in 1914 to 1918 So we leave you with the visuals of 10000 torches litting the moat of a tower of London to commemorate the centenary for 8 days every day starting Sunday between 5 pm and 9 pm tower moat is being gradually illuminated by individual torches lit by volunteers many of whom have a family connection to World War 1 so take a look at these visuals as i take your leave i'll see you next week with another edition of World Panorama bye bye